job with some of those tricky things. Uh, uh, welcome to our service of Holy Eucharist, Rite 2. Uh, our service begins, as always, on page 300, well, not always, but today, on page 355 in the Book of Common Prayer. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be your kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Please join me in saying the Collect for Purity at the bottom of the page. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Sarah saw the son of Hagar the Egyptian, whom she had borne to Abraham, playing with her son Isaac. So she said to Abraham, Cast out this slave woman with her son, for the son of this slave woman shall not inherit along with my son Isaac. The matter was very distressing to Abraham on account of his son. But God said to Abraham, Do not be distressed because of the boy and because of your slave woman. Whatever Sarah says to you, do as she tells you, for it is through Isaac that offspring shall be named for you. As for the son of the slave woman, I will make a nation of him also, because he is your offspring. So Abraham rose early in the morning and took bread and a skin of water and gave it to Hagar, putting it on her shoulder along with the child and sent her away. And she departed and wandered about in the wilderness of Beersheba. When the water in the skin was gone, she cast the child under one of the bushes. Then she, then she went and sat down opposite him a good way off, about the distance of a bow shot. For she said, Do not let me look on the death of the child. And as she sat opposite him, she lifted up her voice and wept. And God heard the voice of the boy, and the angel of God called to Hagar from heaven and said to her, What troubles you, Hagar? Do not be afraid, for God has heard the voice of the boy where he is. Come, lift up the boy and hold him fast with your hand, for I will make a great nation of him. 
And God opened her eyes, and she saw a well of water. She went and filled the skin with water and gave the boy a drink. God was with the boy, and he grew up. He lived in the wilderness and became an expert with the bow. He lived in the wilderness of Paran, and his mother got a wife for him from the land of Egypt. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm for today from your insert is Psalm 86, 1 through 10, and 16, 17. We'll read it responsibly by whole verse. <clears throat> Bow down your ear, O Lord, and answer me, for I am poor and in misery. Be merciful to me, O Lord, for you are my God. I call upon you all the day long. Well, I am the soul of your servant. For to you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. For you, O Lord, are good and forgiving, and great is your love toward all who call upon you. Be here, O Lord, to my prayer. In the time of my trouble, I will call upon you, for you will answer me. Among the gods, there is none like you, O Lord, nor anything like your works. All nations you have, you have made will come and worship you, O Lord, and glorify your name. For you are great, you do wondrous things, and you alone are God. You turn to me and have mercy upon me. Give your strength to the servant and save the child of your handmaid. Show me a sign of your favor, so that those who hate me may see it and be ashamed. Because you, O Lord, have helped me and come comforting me. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. Should we continue in sin in order that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin go on living in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is freed from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
slave like the master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebul, how much more will they malign those of his household? So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered, and nothing secret that will not become unknown. No. What I say to you in the dark, tell in the light, and what you hear whispered, proclaim from the housetops. Do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. And even the hairs of your head are all counted. So do not be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. Everyone, therefore, who acknowledges me before others, I also will acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever denies me before others, I also will deny before my Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and one's foes will be members of one's own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Those who find their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake will find it. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. <laughs> associate or a seminarian or a guest preacher in line for preaching on the Trinity. Um, but I'm here to tell you that uh, preaching on the Trinity is a walk in the park compared to preaching on gospel readings such as this that come with a lot of baggage and that have been used throughout history to harm people rather than to save them or bring them the good news. Uh, and so all week I've been like, oh my gosh. Um, uh, and especially as I sat in meetings with my vestry and, and with other people doing Bible study, uh, everyone focuses on the sword, on the division. Everyone misses, do not be afraid. Your Father in heaven loves you and you are worth more than many sparrows. Everybody misses that because that sword imagery uh, in a culture that is all about power and might and divisiveness and that energy that pits us against each other in things as simple as uh, who gets the right answer on a test. Um, all of that gets in our head and it has been used in bad ways. So if this passage worries or confuses you, you are not alone. It has worried and confused many, mainly because our lectionary places it, you know, on its own, right here, like that. Uh, and we forget week by week that we have been listening to a greater story, and that this is part of that story. This is part of Jesus sending the 12, the apostles, out to cure, to uh, cast out demons, and to resurrect people from the dead, 
in places where his gospel, his message of the kingdom of God that is inclusive and equitable and available to all will not quite be welcomed because of the culture that they are in in that empire. So I want you in that context to ease your mind a little, but not too much. Because what happens here and what he is saying to these disciples is still true today. Proclaiming the gospel in word and deed in a world that prefers silos and isolation and division to keep people under the thumb is not welcome. And people are attached to those silos and so divisions will happen even in your own families, even in our own families when we bring the good news of the gospel. And this text, as one biblical scholar said, is a fine example, when we hear it out of context, of the word not saying what at first glance it seems to be saying. And that same person said that, uh, and this is where I was talking about it comes with baggage, that an energetic proof texter might be able to turn these verses on their head to justify a religious cult's determination to split families apart. But that is not what this scripture is about. And some of you know what proof texting is, but not everybody's. It is what it sounds like. It's pulling out phrases or quotes from the Bible to support your own agenda or someone's agenda rather than God's agenda and tying those things together so that it fits only that thing. Luckily, Episcopalians, we hear the whole story over three years. We, we, can, we, we could, and we do, probably try to proof text sometimes, but uh, it's harder for us because we get the whole story, and you've been getting the whole story over the last few weeks. In chapter 10, we've been listening to, the, um, to Jesus getting the disciples ready through a very weird pep talk that includes what he said in today. Uh, getting them ready to go out in his name. To go out in his name and cure and cast out demons and even resurrect people from the dead because he is giving out to them some of his divine power so that they can do this work. And this they are doing as we learned last week for the, the people of God, uh, for Israel, because they will understand the message and the context of what is being said to them. And they do that first and then later to all nations. They have been hearing what might happen to them. And he's told them to take nothing with them. They're only to be on the receiving end of hospitality, who Jesus said, of people who were worthy. So in Matthew's gospel, that worthiness means that those are people that are going to take you in and offer respite and food to a particular kind of stranger because assistance and charity and helping others, including the stranger, in the law of Moses was a command. They were to help other people. But the disciples are going out with a different kind of agenda. They are going out and they are saying things to people that people don't want to hear. And so for those people to take them in, that's a special thing. So that kind of hospitality is, comes tied to the message of God's reign and not the reign of the empire. And it comes with the message of a new kind of family structure, which in the Mediterranean world in the first century was very different. It was set up in in-groups and out-groups, and that gets complicated, so I'm not going to go into it. But basically that it meant that that message about restructuring the family and including people like tax collectors uh, was not going to go over very well and might even put them in danger of violence from their own families. The message of God's equitable kingdom being placed into a world built on the structure of human power and repression, the gospel calls death. Matthew's gospel 
calls the world's power and oppression death. And Jesus has come to set us free from death, from that. Stanley Hauerwas said, the kingdom brought by Jesus, the kingdom that the disciples are charged to preach has come near, is the kingdom that is the alternative to all kingdoms created by death. And Jesus tells his disciples that just like in the, uh, the book of Micah that he quotes in here, uh, when that message is given out, a brother will kill brother and fathers will betray children and children will seek to destroy their parents. And all those so captured, and I would call it captivated, by the kingdom of death will hate the disciples who witness to the name of Jesus. People do not want change. And they especially don't want change that tells you to love people that you don't want to love. The kingdoms of death, the kingdoms that rule through violence, legitimated by the fear of death, and we're getting to that next part, are challenged by this one who has come to put an end to the rule of death, an end to the rule of human power and oppression that is enforced by making you afraid that if you don't follow my rules, I will put you physically to death. Not only will governors and kings hate and persecute the apostles, he says, but the family will be fractured by loyalty to him. Why? Because of family attachments to power structures of the day and because of the fear of what might happen to my family if my brother goes out and starts preaching this kingdom, he might be killed. So I'm going to shut him down as fast as I can. I want you to think about that in terms of today, in terms of today's world. How do people get shut down when they bring things into the room that, that others don't want to hear? Luckily, rarely by death, although we're seeing that happen more and more. So I want you to think about your own experience as a family. Are there topics that you dread might come up at Thanksgiving or other big family gatherings when everyone is there? Are there people that come in and you know that that person is going to be beating a drum? A drum that maybe you might want to hear but somebody else might not? Or you don't want to hear and only that one person is bringing? Jesus is sending his disciples out to beat that drum. He is sending them out to their families and their relatives and to people that they are barely related to just because they all belong in, the, in, in Judah uh, to the Hebrew people to beat that drum. And to broach topics simply by proclaiming through their actions of healing anyone and everyone, no matter why they need that healing, and no matter who they are, in the name of God. And he tells them that they are to fear no earthly death, because the Son of Man has come to destroy death. They are to carry with them the fearlessness in human company that comes from knowing that the only one in the universe that they should ever be afraid of or and who is worthy of such fear is the creator because the only entity in the universe with the ability to destroy not only your bodily life but extinguish your very soul as if it has never been is the creator Whoa. Thank you, Jesus. I really want to preach on this today. <laughs> However, hear the good news. He tells them that you are right to fear that kind of power. But the Creator is not one to do such a loving thing. Not such a thing. <laughs> the Creator is one to do loving things. The Creator is not one to do such a thing. Not to anyone. Because the Creator loves all of creation so much that even the death of a creature as tiny as a sparrow is carefully noticed 
by the Creator and mourned. And that even the hairs on your head, if one of them falls out or turns gray, a lot of mine have, the Creator notices that and is with you in that experience. How much more so, he asked his disciples, is the anguish of one of the beloved children of God noticed? And we hear that in the story of Agar. child under the bush is heard by God and the angel of God comes and says, don't, it's okay. I am with you. So though he brings peace through the freedom from the world of death, that peace is not immediate. And it comes with a great cost. And that cost is accepting the way of the cross. And the way of the cross is a sacrifice that seems foolhardy to the world of power and oppression, but brings to each and every person that accepts it freedom, peace of mind, and joy that you can never imagine until you actually let go and accept it. But before God's peace can be realized, first... We human beings are going to squirm and rebel and cling to the way of pain that we have created for one another because we don't know anything else. And what we don't know, we are afraid of. So right there in the very middle of that scripture, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. You hear it more than anything in the gospel. We fear the wrong things. And God knows how tempting that is to fear those wrong things because God lived among us and experienced that pain, the pain of emotional abuse, the pain of physical abuse, and the pain of death on a cross. No wonder he gives his apostles such an honest, dare I call it, pep talk, <coughs> Because they need to know what they are going to face and they need to go out fearlessly and joyfully knowing that they are bringing about the kingdom of God and that they may not see it in their own lifetime. And in fact, in their own lifetime, they will be beaten and spat on and cursed and even put to death. A lot of the apostles were murdered. Think about that. And that they might experience those same things even from their own family social isolation for saying things people don't want to hear. What they will see is its beginning. And that movement took off like wildfire, didn't it? And it still continues to do that because there is hope and joy on the other end. Yesterday I was in Asheville with some other disciples who worked towards bringing about the beloved community in our own time. And Canon Augusta was there. She was previewing a, this sounds like a lot of word mouthful, a cultural bias and awareness exercise that she and a few others have developed. And I want to tell you that it was awesome. It was four hours long and I felt like it was minutes that had passed when we finished. And if you get the chance when it's fully realized, I want you to do it because you will just be blown away and know that that kingdom work is coming through that. But she said something during that time that was so profound and it fit with today's gospel and you might have heard her say that before but it fits so well I want you to hear it. And she said in order to share the bread on Sunday first you have to break it. You have to tear it apart before you can put it back together and distribute it among the people to make one body. Amazing. What truth. If we are to accept the kingdom of God and to truly work for it as we say that we want to when we pray your kingdom come on earth as in heaven, if we say that we believe that, first we have to break ties with the kingdoms of pain and death and power and oppression. And we have to be willing to suffer the cost of 
what happens when we start doing that around our family and friends who are so tied to that kingdom. But when we do, we can open for them and for ourselves peace that the world can never understand and the joy of believing and community in the new family of God's kingdom. May the Spirit of God be with us all as he has promised he will be all the way through it and give us courage and strength to accomplish the part that we have been set in our own day. Amen. Please stand and join me in the nice area. 358 is the page, if you need that. We believe in one God, 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 the Father of the Almighty, the Maker of heaven and earth, and of all things seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternal God.
pray for relief of pain for those whose bodies and hearts ache. We ask for healing for all who suffer. We especially pray for Melvin or Tomas, Margaret Hale, Jen and Connie Bergen, Phoebe and Jim Rockmore, Patrice Luther, Jim Wallace, Ann Allen, Kathleen Buchanan, Barbara Avery, Katie Rockmore, Margo Brown Hampton, Marine and Don Trite, Bob Monte, Mitch Gillespie, Casey Boyd, Chris Tipton, Jim Haney, Bree Smith, Nancy Long, Charles Foreman, and all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. We commit to your mercy all who have died, that your will of them may be fulfilled. And we pray that you may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, There were just a couple of things um, in the announcements that uh, Amanda asked me to highlight. Uh, one of them was that we are collecting for the backpack project. Um, and so we'll be doing that for the next couple of months. So please bring things in for that. It's in your, in your announcements, in your bulletin insert. So be, be sure to see that. But it, she just wanted me to highlight that for you. Also, next week, we, uh, in lieu of coffee hour, we are going to go down to the spillway. And what's the name of the band? It's actually mine. It's actually mine? Yeah, they, they, the other band canceled, so they got Woohoo! Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it's also uh, Carrie Davis' special birthday.
USA, and she's going to meet us there. She's going to come over from uh, Morganton from her field placement and meet us there. And so we're going to uh, enjoy brunch and music and celebrate with Carrie for her birthday. Uh, today, Amanda Tippy is doing the coffee hour, and she has yeah, new cheeses to try. Amanda. Yeah, I've got a couple things. One, I want to tag along with the Operation Backpacks. That's the Those of you who don't know what it is, it's the community coming together to provide backpacks and the goodies for our school. My family has taken part in receiving these benefits for the last five years. When we lived in Illinois, I spent over $350 providing school supplies for my family. We moved here and I spent about Please do that. It's fun. And it's as simple as making some coffee and getting some, I don't know, iced cookies or something. You don't free, have please. To bring your own homemade cheese. <laughs> and because of Red Door Jazz, if you want to make it really easy on yourself, we still have candy and nuts and stuff like that in the closet. So if you just want to host it and make the coffee and get it ready, you can say, Aaron, get stuff out of the closet, and I will. Um, and I think. Was there anything else that needed to be announced? I feel like there was one other thing. I can't remember what it is. Uh, but a read, your, read your bulletin insert uh, and uh, let us walk in love as Christ has loved us as a fragrant offering to God.
thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on the first day of the week ever came death in the grave, and by his glorious resurrection open to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. supper he took the cup of wine and when he had given thanks he gave it to them and said drink this all of you this is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin whenever you drink it do this for the remembrance of me therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will not again. And we celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension. We offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but to us.
the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ came because God loves you, sees you as worthy, and invites you to this table.
us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. May today you find peace within. May you trust God that you are exactly where you are meant to be. May you not forget the infinite possibilities that are born of faith. May you use those gifts that you have received and pass on the love that has been given to you. May you be content knowing that you are a child of God and let this presence settle into your bones and allow your soul the freedom to sing, dance, praise, and love. It is there for each and every one of us. And that blessing of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and go with you always. Amen. Amen. Amen.